Hi, Nesha is here. My starter and end game build for Affliction League is Explosive Arrow Ballista Elementalist. The best thing about this build is an excellent written guide on the Max Roll website, so in this video I can tell you all about the little changes I made. This is the third league I have played this build and it is the best so far thanks to the new league items and passive tree. In case you never played this build before, your main skill is Explosive Arrow linked with Ballista Totem support. All targeting and damage is done by your totems. In this version of the build I can have 6 totems at the same time. After the first arrow is stuck on the enemy, your totems have 1 second to add up to 20 arrows or 22 arrows if you use an explosive arrow gem with 20 quality. After 1 second the first arrow will explode and consume all other arrows which will increase damage. This explosion will ignite the enemy and in this version of the build ignite is the main damage. For the rare monsters and bosses, you also use Frenzy to get 3 Frenzy charges and cast Arcanist Brand which will debuff the enemy with vulnerability curse. Now let me tell you about the changes I made. For the leveling up to level 38, I use Purifying Flame instead of Rolling Magma skill. At level 38, I switch to the Explosive Arrow with the standard 4 link setup. My other gems were Arcanist Brand. Flame Surge, Vulnerability, Life Tap, Flame Dash and Immortal Call linked with Life Tap, Frenzy linked with Grito Multiple Projectiles, Culling Strikes and Life Tap. I used Purity of Elements and Precision. Later, when I didn't have mana problems, I added Grace. This way I managed to keep my boots without any gems socketed. Now let's talk about Affliction League, Wildwood Passive 3 and items. In Act 3 I found Warden of Eves and picked his passive 3. I used the first two point, points to get 30% increased movement speed if you have equipped boots with no socketed gem. After that I picked Coated Blade, can apply tinctures to your equipped weapon. I used one for increased damage against enemies that are on low life. This way I had a nice damage boost and a good movement bonus. It is also very cheap and good enough for even tier 16 maps. I used this setup until I found the main Wildwood boss. After that I looked for Primal Huntress in Wildwood and switched to her passive tree. For the last two points she asked to defeat 500 specific monsters inside Wildwood. I used these 8 points to get 3 charm slots and also a backpack with 20 inventory spaces. On PRDB website you can find the list with all possible mods for these charms. For me the best mod to have is a max roll of 40% increase effect of onslaught on you. These mods stack and are excellent bonus for attack speed and movement speed. Charm with just this mod with max roll is at the moment around 40 chaos. Depending on how good a second mod is, the price jumps to one or more divines. Now here is my current gear, gems and passive tree. For all items in the next several days I will upload crafting guides. Meanwhile you can join my discord server and ask me anything about this build. Around level 85 I've crafted a good bow. The crafting cost was around 8 divines. Unique body armor was cheap, under 10 chaos. The main benefit is 50% of physical damage from hits taken as lightning damage. With the flask I have another 15%. It is also possible to get another 18% I think on a helmet, which I don't have at the moment. Next is a quiver. These are usually a pain to craft, so I used Life Search and got one nice from trade for 150 chaos. The unique belt is cheap under 10 chaos. Around level 90 I crafted a nice helmet, the base with 29 chaos resistance was 60 chaos. In early maps as a drop I got these gloves, they are nothing special. For the boots I paid 1 divine for the base with fractured mod. I used the deafening essence of zeal until I got a nice amount of life and resistance. The left ring is reserved for polaric devastation. The price at the moment is around 1 divine.
For the second ring, I prefer to use an amid string with, which is easy to craft with harvest. Try to get tier 1 chaos resistance mod and at least 50 life. This increased elemental damage with attack skill mod was just a lucky bonus. For the amulet, I used life search until I got one nice for 2.5 divines, around level 92. Before that, I used a cheap amulet with just plus 1 to level of all fire skill gems. Anointment is cheap, but it gives a good damage boost. There are many good options, pick one you like. I will craft soon new gloves and then I will add quality to my amulet, rings and belt. For flasks, I use 3 divine life flasks with instant recovery, taste of hate and one quicksilver flask with the suffix reduce the effect of curses. If you are good with flask management, you should replace one divine life flask with a good jade flask for more invasion. Now here is my Pantheon, I'm using Soul of the Brian King and also uh, this one for to benefit my life flasks. Also it is nice to have in tier 16 maps, enemies you hit recently have 50% reduced life regeneration rate. When there is burning ground, I switch to this one, so I'm unaffected by burning ground. Now here is my passive tree. It is standard setup. I'm using uh, damage or time mastery, then life mastery, uh, where is totem mastery for chance to summon two totems. Reservation mastery is optional in case you're missing either resistances or uh, accuracy. I'm also using evasion mastery for additional suppressed spell chance for suppress spell damage and I also use flask mastery this nice way to get additional flask charges. Uh, from jewels I'm using unique jewel it is nice damage boost but the main for me the main thing is it, it saves four passives these four passives this way I have enough passives to use one large cluster and one medium cluster jewel. I switched, I start using uh, these two cluster jewels around level 93, I think. And on a large cluster jewel, two main, for me, two main notables are disorienting display, chance to blind nearby enemies, and smoking remains, chance to create smoke cloud. The third notable is optional, you can pick something else. I picked one for elemental resistances. On medium cluster jewel, the main notable is sleepless sentries. You have onslaught if you summon a totem recently. The second notable is optional. I picked one for increased attack because speed if you summon a totem recently. Uh, the next two points I will probably spend to get iron wood. This way I can get, with 6 totems, 900 additional armor. And for Ascendancy, I'm using standard setup, Shape of the Flames, Mastermind, Heart of Destruction and Bastion of Elements. And you already seen my Primalist tree. I spent eight points to get three charms and also to get 20 inventory slots. When you reach maps, if you wonder what upgrades to get first, here is a list in order of importance and how much they cost. Now let's talk about how much attack speed you need for this build. On Reddit, I found a nice post and I will add a link in my pinned comment. Uh, this calculation was done for 6 ballista and which must hit 24 times. This means, this means that this calculation will work for uh, 20 quality explosive arrow gem which can stack 22 arrows. So in optimal situation 6 ballista need 3 attacks per second. 
and in suboptimal it is 3.17 at the moment i i have 2.99 and when i add better gloves with uh, better increase attack speed mod i think i will have enough for 20 quality explosive arrow and 22 arrows if you have any questions about this build you can leave them in comments or you can join my discord server this will be all for now thanks for watching and see you next time Greetings. Make them fear you. and not Stranger!
Oh. 